Good morning, folks. Yesterday we analyzed the M3 solar flare and CME. It is heading our way, but we also noted a southern filament snap that was in progress at that time. We now have a better full view of that eruption, and despite a smaller breadth of ejecta visible on SDO, Soho Lasco seems to indicate that a significant CME was indeed released from the southern event as well. NASA's Enlil, now showing just that second eruption, heading in Earth's direction, while NOAA's Enlil spiral shows both ejections heading our way there. By the way, I have compiled NOAA's, NASA's, and my own CME impact time predictions under the latest news at spaceweathernews.com, always keeping updated. Let's peek in on the flaring where that big northern group popped another M-class flare this morning. Multiple events from that region call for an Uyen factor storm uptick, and we're seeing three low-pressure cells develop in the east. Two already have tropical warnings on them. You'll have to imagine there will be strengthening with all the moisture and energy they've got to choose from. Nasty. Anyway, the flaring has a great shot at staying high today. The departing group down south gets a B-minus for size and magnetism. May pop as she departs, but up north it's the real story. Beta, gamma, delta, magnetic class with a major complexity event at the trailing half. We'll also be monitoring the three filaments dancing around that area for their destabilization. Solar wind is calm and calming. The shock waves should be easily visible when they arrive here at Earth, including on the KP index. Also note that the high energy proton radiation storm is ended and the higher total count dose is dropping out of the satellite environment. Well, folks, it isn't a major quake watch, but we do have an Earth-facing coronal hole. Number one factor for seismicity had an opening in those coronal fields and streamed to IMF and Alphan waves this way and was still able to produce some increased activity as Sinabung had a surge in activity that caused pyroclastic flows to destroy farmlands and surrounding areas. Evacuations took place Wednesday. We also had a 6.4 earthquake that struck Chile overnight. No tsunami, but one buoy does show a tiny ding from the event. Top story today comes from Rosetta. Since the lander woke up, its mission has gotten a very big green light re-go. Here's a full article with graphics on the water content at Comet 67P. Don't forget, it is Saturday, so today's Fly on the Wall podcast will be uploaded to suspiciousobservers.org in a few hours. Good topics coming up today, so members, be sure to check it out. We're coming to the weather where I'll identify two lows and convergences at each of our top viewer locations. Watch my cursor point out how the clouds and storm moisture stick to those lows and convergence lines. Again, that's two systems in each of our top viewer locations. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.